we're so excited that you guys are here. This Christmas season, we've been venturing through the voices of Christmas and talking about what the voice of God sounds like. And our heart and passion has been that we would become so familiar with the voice of God that we would begin to reflect that voice. We would understand his heart and his passion for people and for the lost and the hope that comes from him and the love and joy and peace and all these things that we would apply it to our lives and we leave this place changed looking more like him and less like the world, amen? How many people know we can always get better? How many people know that your spouse can always get better? Now, that was way more hands than the first time. We need to work on that. This is the Christmas, no, I'm just kidding. We can all always get better in our relationship with the Lord. How does that happen? Well, it comes from intentional time. It comes from diving into the word. It comes from time in prayer, making sure that you're intentional and growing that relationship with the Lord. We've talked about his love. We've also talked about the joy that comes from a relationship with him. And all of these things, and today we're gonna talk about peace. Peace. I love to listen to this question. What would you love for the, what would you like to see happen in the world the most? And everybody always says, world peace. World peace. World peace, this foreign idea to where it would be a ceasefire, a complete unity, that there would be no frustration or hatred or war, and that this world would be full of, of peaceful, unified tranquility, when the truth is that we will never find peace here in this world. We are chasing after a foreign idea, the reason is this, because we have all fallen short of the glory of God and the flesh and the enemy who is the ruler of this world, proud to around like a lion, those things are causes of not peace. We will not find peace in this world, but did you know that you can live in a world that has no worldly peace, but you have spiritual peace? This is what we must understand as believers that this idea of peace is peace in God. It's not peace because of a circumstance. I love that we say Christmas is the most wonderful time of the year. But if you went to Food Lion or Publix yesterday, you would disagree. I've never run into so many people with my grocery cart. Uh, first of all, I'm, I'm struggling figuring out where things are. Second of all, I think that they should, you know those mirrors they have in the mountain that's rounded that you can see around the corner, I think that they should put those at the end of every aisle in a grocery store, amen? Can we start a petition? Somebody work in a grocery store, can we make that happen? We'll put the Berg Church sticker on the mirrors, it'll be awesome. When you're walking through the grocery store and everybody's in a rush and we're trying to cram things last second and then you're trying to get your house clean. And then you've gotta remember that, oh, I have to get ready, and there's people coming over, and you have to make sure that this person doesn't sit by this person, or they'll talk about the same situation over and over again. And we fantasize about Christmas be the most wonderful time of the year, but quickly, it can just become the busiest, most chaotic, most frustrating season that we're excited to get through. And if we're not careful, as people, every season of our life will be overlooked in hopes that the future season will be greater. And we live in this constant circle of, well, if we can just get through Christmas, maybe it'll be better in the new year. Well, maybe it'll be better after the new year when everything calms down. Or maybe our relationship will be better when work calms down and we always continuously look towards the future that we find no peace or joy or love or hope in the present. What if I was to tell you today that the exact answers that you were looking for are much closer than you think? The peace that you're trying to find, the love that you need to feel in your life, the joy that you're hoping to experience this season is much closer than it seems. Has anybody ever been looking for their keys and your keys are in your hand? Am I the only one? I'm judging by the sound of that laughter, I'm not. There's been so many times where I'm looking for something. I was always terrible at hide and seek. I was good at hiding and terrible at seeking. And I truly believe that's why the Lord brought my wife into my life because she remembers everything. I can ask her about the most random thing. Hey, where is this? Oh, it's right over there on that corner next to that toy. And I'm like, how do you, how do you even remember these things? And, 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 
I forget and I miss things quickly. And if I'm looking for something, sometimes I'll look a lot more difficult places than it appears when the truth is this Christmas season, when you're hoping for peace, when you're hoping for joy, when you're hoping to experience love, it's much closer than you think. But it's not found in a place. It's not found in a season. It's not found in a present. It's not found in the meal. It's not found in peace and quiet. Peace is found in a person and his name is Jesus. And he's here. Peace is found in a person and his name is Jesus. And Jesus is very present. He walks with you. He wants to talk with you that he's here. And can I tell you today, I want to encourage you, no matter how busy and chaotic your life may be, you can find peace in chaos. You can find peace this Christmas season. Because it's not dictated by a circumstance, it's dictated by a person. A lot of us are looking for peace in this most wonderful, busiest, chaotic time of the year. And we're looking in far off places, into the future, into, into different hobbies, into getting back to work. And we're thinking about the stresses of all the things that we're going to have to do when you can find peace right where you are because he is here. The first place that you can find peace is in the presence of God. This is what the Bible says in John chapter 14, verses 25 through 27. I'm telling you these things now while I am still with you. But when the Father sends the advocate as my representative, that is the Holy Spirit, he will teach you everything and will remind you everything I have told you. I am leaving you with the gift of peace of mind and heart. And the peace I give is a gift the world cannot give. So don't be troubled or afraid. It was probably a little bit easier to be somewhat full of peace when Jesus was present. You know, the disciples went through a lot, but anytime they were with Jesus, he was what they fell back on. The winds and waves were there, the storm was hitting hard, the boat felt like it was gonna sink, they went and woke Jesus up. The people were starving, Jesus had been preaching all day. They had no food. They went and got Jesus. Every single moment where there seemed to be no peace, they ran and grabbed Jesus. And what Jesus was telling them is when he lived that perfect life you and I could never live, died the death that you and I deserve, and rose again three days later, that they would not be void of peace just because Jesus wasn't there. As Jesus ascended to be with his father, sitting at the right hand of his throne, he said, I'm sending behind a representative, a third person, someone who can give you that peace, someone you can walk in relationship with, someone who is as close to you right now as Jesus was to the disciples when he walked with them. He said, I'm leaving behind the Holy Spirit. And he will teach you everything and remind you of everything I have told you. I'm leaving you with the gift of peace of mind and heart. And the peace I give is a gift the world cannot give. I want you to hear that from the word of God today because a lot of us are trying to find peace in something. Peace in a relationship. Peace in a location. Peace in a season peace in a new job, peace in a move, and we're always trying to change things in our life to find peace. And I want to tell you, if you're just trying to change things in your life to find peace, you'll continue to change them and change them and change them and change them. Because peace is not found in something that you and I can create. It's found in our creator. The Bible says it's a gift that he alone can give and the world cannot give. Psalms 36, 7 says, how precious is your unfailing love, O God. All humanity finds shelter in the shadow of your wing, that you can find peace in the presence of God. You could experience this morning, as Aaron's up here singing this beautiful Noel song, you just have this calming peace and you don't know where it's coming from, you just feel completely relaxed. And a lot of times we uh, misconceive something that's just a relaxing moment when it's actually the peace of God trying to fill your heart. But if we do not look for it, we will not find it. But when he shows up, and that peace that comes from his presence, and you're ready to receive it, if your hands are open and you're ready, God, send it my way. When you're ready to receive something, when he comes to fill your heart with that peace, it will not land on barren soil. You can find peace in the presence of God. The second place that you can find peace that's a lot more difficult than just in the presence of God is you can find peace in persevering. Let me read this passage from the Christmas narrative, and you tell me how peaceful this sounds. Luke chapter 2, verse 1 through 7. 
At the time, the Roman emperor Augustus decreed that a census should be taken throughout the Roman Empire. This was the first census taken since Quirinius was governor of Syria. All returned to their own ancestral towns to register for the census. And because uh, Joseph was a descendant of King David, he had to go to Bethlehem in Judea, David's ancient home. He traveled there from the village of Nazareth in Galilee. He took with him Mary, to whom he was engaged, whom was expecting a child. And while they were there, the time came for her baby to be born. She gave birth to her firstborn son. How many people know that childbirth is not that simple? How many people wish it was? (laughs) It came time for the baby to be born. She gave birth to her firstborn son. She wrapped him snugly in strips of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no lodging available for them. When you read this passage, it sounds so peaceful because we're not a part of the situation. But let's just imagine this for a moment. Traveling a long way with a donkey, pregnant fiance, that doesn't sound very peaceful, just those two things alone, let's add the rest of the elements. Traveling afar, comes time to have the baby, there's nowhere to have the baby. Nobody's opening space. There's a barn. Okay, we're going to go in this barn. This is where animals live. This is what an animal eats out of. Okay, we're going to birth the baby here. How many people think that if you were in this situation and you were having a child in a barn, in a stable, riding a donkey, a long way to get there, that would be an incredible, that's not on your birthing plan. That's not what mothers dream about. What do you want to do? I'd really love to ride on a donkey to the longest hospital away. No doctors there. We're actually going to have it in the janitor's closet next to the mop. There might be some cock, like cockroaches. Like, this is gross. This is stressful. This is a crazy, crazy moment. The Bible says that it came time for her baby to be born, and there she birthed her her, her firstborn son. I don't know. I've experienced this twice. It's not that simple. This is a very, what we would call, stressful moment, yet Mary has peace in God the whole time. Riding on a donkey, doesn't know if she's going to make it there. The labor pains kick in. There's nowhere to have it, yet the whole time, in the most stressful situation of her life, she has peace and it doesn't come from who she is. She doesn't even know the, she knows who her God is. And I want to tell you what. When you know the heart of God and you experience that peace that surpasses all understanding, no matter what situation you face, you can find that peace again because it's not in a thing, it's not in a circumstance, it's in your creator and his name is Jesus. And no matter how stressful your life is, you can find peace in God. I want to encourage somebody who is already stressed out about this Christmas season. You got to prepare the house. Maybe you're walking through heartbreak and it's the first one without somebody. Whatever it may be, you can find peace. If Mary can find peace in God as she's about to birth a baby riding on a donkey across a country into a city she doesn't know, let's talk about the lines for a minute. There was a census for the entire community. How many people, your spiritual gift, the first one on your test is impatience, waiting in a line to be counted. All of this happening at once, yet she finds peace in God. Because you can find peace in perseverance. A lot of us think that peace comes when the seasons aren't as busy, or when we're relaxed, or we'll just find peace on our vacation. Peace isn't found in physical rest, it's found in spiritual rest. And spiritual rest isn't dictated by the season that you're living in. You can find peace in the perseverance, but what the enemy wants us to do is quit. Mary and Joseph could have easily said, you know what, let's go to this town right here and just take a break. Maybe we'll uh, have the baby here. But they pushed through, and because they pushed through, there was prophecies that were spoken over this baby that that came to life because of their faithfulness, because of their perseverance. What if the peace that God is waiting to pour into your life is on the other side of you pushing through? What if because we quit and we say, you know what, God, I was waiting on you to move, but I'm just going to take control because it's getting a little nerve wracking. What if we say, oh, I'm going to I'm going to follow you in faith. But then when we get there and it gets hard, we're like, oh, I don't want to do that so much. 
It's really easy on Sunday morning to say, you know what, I'm going to change the world for Jesus Christ. I'm going to go tell everybody I know, all my neighbors about him. I'm going to pray for them right where they are and believe for God to do a mighty thing. But then you sit at their doorstep and your heart drops into your stomach and you start to think about, well, what if I say the wrong thing? Well, what if I push them away? What if they just slam the door? And we start to have all these doubts. What if the peace of God is on the other side of your perseverance? It's not just in the times when everything is relaxed and sunshine and rainbows. It's when you have to push through. Your faith grows and you find peace. Peace can be found in perseverance. Jesus told the disciples in Matthew 14, don't be afraid. He said, take courage because I'm here. And I believe that's what he wants to say over your life today. Don't let fear, don't let anxiety, don't let worry, don't let the busyness of the season keep you from taking courage and faith in Christ because he is with you, he's never left you, he's never forsaken you, that the God who brings peace into our life is still ready to provide for yours. You can find peace in his presence. Spending time with God can bring peace to your life. Make that an intentional habit. A lot of us have this misconception that we have to spend three hours a day and read three chapters in order to be a good Christian. I hope that's not the truth because my attention span in three hours are not the same time. It doesn't matter the time. You don't have to punch in your clock and punch out. It matters the intentionality. That are you prioritizing him? That if you're living in a season of stress and busyness, that prioritizing him is the number one thing that you need to do. Oftentimes what we do is we try to fit God in the the cracks of our schedule, but we should be prioritizing him first. Wake up and spend time in his word. I promise you five minutes earlier, the spiritual rest is greater than the five minutes of physical rest that you'll ever find. You cannot sleep enough to find enough peace in your life that you can find in Jesus Christ. We must be intentional. Read five verses a day. Read one verse a day. Whatever it is, be intentional with your time with the Lord. You can find peace in his presence. You can find peace in perseverance. You can also find peace in your purpose. Isaiah 26, 12 through 13 says this. Lord, you will grant us peace. All we have accomplished is really from you. O Lord, our God, others have ruled us, but you alone are the one we worship. I was about 17 years old and I made a massive mistake with my vehicle. I loved my, my first car that I got. It was like a Honda Passport, I think is what it was called. It was in 1994, so it was the same age as me. We were great, we were buddies, you know. I, I got to go mudding a little bit, only got stuck once. And uh, I did some fun things with this vehicle, but I failed to do one thing that was extremely necessary. You see, I put gas in it all the time but I didn't realize that there was this thing called oil that you had to fill up. So what I did was I was driving around one day and all of a sudden the car stops and I find out because I didn't put in it what I was supposed to put in it, the car broke. The engine had to be replaced, everything else had to be replaced and because I wasn't stewarding something so small that was necessary for the vehicle to be healthy, the entire thing was destroyed. And I was frustrated at the vehicle. This is the car's fault. This should have done better. It should have been fine. It should have lasted. Well, did you put oil in it? No, I put gas in it. And because I didn't take care of something the way it was intended to be taken care of, it broke down. And I want to tell you the same thing is the case for your spiritual life today. That if you do not feed your soul the things that you were designed to be fed, then you will break down. That if you do not spend time being filled with the Spirit of God by reading his word, spend time praying, be a part of church, can I tell you that things happen in a building of a congregation worshiping the Lord together that don't when you're not here? There used to be a day where we prioritized going to church as a family above all things. I remember making this travel baseball team when I was a a young teenager, and I I probably began got put on the list to be the water boy because I was a cap man, you need some water, I got you. I didn't know, but I got signed up for the list and I looked at my parents and they looked at me and they said, we're sorry, son. Church is on Sundays. And I was so angry. I was so angry. How dare you? This could ruin my baseball career. (laughs) A lot of good that's doing nowadays. Adult softball, baby, Berg softball, we're sticking together. My parents looked at me and said, no, son, we're going to church. And I was so angry. 
And I'm not saying that if anybody plays travel ball on a Sunday that you are a bad Christian. That is not what I'm saying. But I am saying that there is an important thing that happens when the saints gather together. That's why the Bible says do not forsake to the, do not forsake the gathering together of the saints as those some do. That there is important things that happen when we come together to worship the Lord. There's important things that happen when you spend time praying. There's important things that happen when you surround yourself with people who are pursuing the same things as you. I'm not telling all of you this to make you feel bad about yourself. I'm telling you this to be aware that when your spiritual, all the lights come on in your spiritual life like it is in your vehicle, that if you're not feeding your soul the things that's necessary for you to experience peace, hope, love, and joy in all of these things, your life will break down and what happens happens is we get frustrated at God. God, how could you let this happen to me? How could you let this happen to him? How could you let bad things happen to good people and all of this and we get so angry at God when the truth is we haven't been taking care of ourselves the way that we were intended to. You find peace in your purpose. You find peace in serving the broken and serving those in generosity and pursuing the spirit of God. We have found so much peace in the families that we've been able to bless this Christmas season and the ministries that we've been able to bless. We celebrated last week, we picked up 20 missionaries for the year of 2024 that we are passionate about not just making an impact in our community but globally that we find peace and joy in all of these things. It's not because we get to do something, it's because we are walking in the purpose that God created created us, and that's to serve. Jesus came, the one who should have been served the whole time, and the Bible says he didn't come to be served, he came to serve, that when we walk in our purpose, you will find peace. One of our purposes is to be a peacemaker, Matthew 5, 9, God blesses those who work for peace, they will be called the children of God. God, blessed are the peacemakers. I want to challenge you today, be a peacemaker. This Christmas season, in your home, when you're frustrated, when he forgot to put something out, when she forgot to ask for something, when your kids didn't clean up the way they were supposed to, when everything gets under your skin and makes you frustrated, be a peacemaker. Fathers, your job this Christmas season is to put the wrapping paper in that trash bag and be a peacemaker. Mothers, whatever your role is and whatever else you need him to do, be a peacemaker. That is where it starts. We think that peace is gonna happen by accident. Peace comes from intentionality. Spending time with Jesus and being a peacemaker, I wonder why the shoes and the armor of God are the ones that are called the shoes of peace. Not the shield so that you can protect yourself from everything. It's the things that keep you moving forward. That when you're walking in your purpose, you find peace. The last place we can find peace is you can find peace in prayer. As the band comes and helps me close and we move into this moment at the end of our service, Philippians 4, 6 through 7 says this, don't worry about anything and stay, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. You know, a lot of us read this passage and we think, well, that's just the Christianese answer. I don't know about y'all, but sometimes those people are the ones that frustrate me. Man, I'm so angry, I can't believe this happened again. You know, talk about my car, my car broke down, I'm so frustrated and I'm angry, I can't believe this happened. Well, have you tried praying about it? Our first reaction is like, I'm never telling you again when I'm frustrated. Really, you're gonna be that guy? You're gonna be that guy? Have you tried praying about it? Hey, you wanna pray about it? Our first instinct is we get so frustrated about it because we think that that's like this holier than thou thing. And what we've done is we have started to take the power out of prayer. I want to remind you, prayer is one of the greatest weapons in the arsenal of God that there is. That mountains can move when you pray. Healing can take place when you pray. Provision can be made when you pray. And it's not because of something that you did, but what prayer is is saying, God, I don't have the answers. I need you. You are opening the opportunity for heaven to move here on earth. And while we're saying, well, prayer, you know, just that typical thing of prayer doesn't really do anything. It just blesses our food and we hope the calories don't take place. No, prayer carries power. It can change everything in your life. It can build your faith. 
It can bring you peace. It can bring you joy. When, we, when the Bible says pray about everything, it doesn't just mean that you're supposed to go around and be this little happy Christian. It means when you're walking through the hardest season in your life, pray about it. When you're in a season of joy and good things are happening, pray about it. Thank God for it because it's in prayer that we get to our knees that we see God move in a mighty way. Even Jesus sought his father constantly. He'd provide a miracle, then he'd go get alone and he'd pray to his father. Before he crucified, got in the garden, prayed to his father. Spent 40 days in the desert, no food or water, prayed to his father because there is an importance in prayer. You want to find peace in your life? Pray in everything. Would you stand with me? I remember those moments in my life that it seemed like hope and peace and joy wasn't an option. And I sought God. I sought the Lord and he answered. I told a lot of these stories. You know, I remember when Harper was born and her umbilical cord was wrapped around her neck and the womb of crystal and the nurses are whispering to each other and trying to act like everything's okay and I and I don't hear what they're saying but I can see it in their eyes but not everything's okay this this little uh the heart monitor keeps going off and if she turns in a different direction we would lose her heartbeat and she had to sit in a certain way and I, while they were just acting like everything's okay I went into the bathroom and it wasn't because I needed to use the bathroom it's because I was in a place of spiritual panic and I said God I know that you split the seas I know that you saved Daniel from the lion's den. I know that you saved Shadrach and Meshach and Abednego from the fire. God, I know that you're a God of miracles and I believe that you're still doing them today. I couldn't change the situation, but I knew the one who could. I remember that moment. I remember face Skyping. Skyping was the thing when Crystal was in South America for almost two years as we got to Skype about once a month and she'd show me and she'd have this outbreak of this disease all over her hands and they looked like like balloons, like they were crazy and covered in something and I'd, I couldn't do anything about it because I wasn't there and me as a person who I want to help control the situation, I was in panic and the only thing that I could do was pray. I remember getting the call when somebody called us from my father's work and said that he had fallen through a roof off of through 30 feet and we had no clue the outcome or how hurt he was. We knew we were flying to Winston-Salem in our vehicle and I knew to pray. This prayer can change everything. It's not because of your words. It's because the doors that you are opening are giving room for God to move in a mighty way in your life. If you want peace, it's not found in a thing. It's not found in a place. It's not found in a season. It's not found in a gift. It's not found in decorations. It's not found in your life when your life isn't busy. Can we get rid of this thought that one day we won't be busy? Honestly, I want to be busy until Jesus comes back because there's work to do and there's people to reach. I want to steward the time that God has given me well. There's never a season where everything will just become calm and we all get three weeks off of work just to hang out and talk about the good things of the Lord. But it's in the persevering we can find peace. It's in the presence of God you can find peace. And I want to encourage you today that if you are here and you haven't experienced that peace, my question for you is where have you been looking and have you chosen Jesus? I know this lived in a world full of darkness because Jesus lived a perfect life and died a death you and I deserve and rose again we can find peace the flame was lit because of the sacrifice of God's son and it lights the flame of our life when we choose a relationship with him and we can find hope and we can experience joy and love and we can find peace but until we choose Jesus we stay in darkness. One day we'll all stand before the Father and it's whenever he calls you home or when he comes for his church and we know one day he's coming, amen? amen? We don't know how soon, but we know we're closer today than we were yesterday. One day we'll stand before God the Father and we won't get to give him our Christian resume or prove to him our good deeds, but he'll say, well done, my good and faithful servant, and depart from me, for I never knew you. And the reason that he'll say, well done, my good and faithful servant, is because, not because you did anything, but it's because you chose him. 
You can't work your way into heaven. You can't show up with people and prove that you've been a good enough person. But when you stand before God the Father, he'll say, well done, my good and faithful servant, or depart from me, for I never knew you. How do we get to hear the good one? Well, the Bible says to boldly proclaim that Christ is Lord and believe in your heart that he rose again from the dead, and ye shall be saved. And I want to encourage you today that if you don't know where your eternity would be spent, if he was to come back in the next few minutes, right now, tomorrow, whatever it may be, I want to make sure that you're ready. If you're here and you say, you know what, Pastor Wes, if he was to come back today, I don't know where I would spend eternity. I wanna encourage you. You can leave this place knowing that you know that you know where your eternity lies. You can leave this room with a life that has now has access to hope and to love and to peace and to joy. All it takes is to boldly proclaim that Christ is Lord and believe in your heart that he rose again from the dead. And I wanna give you an opportunity to do that today. If you're here and you say, Pastor Wes, I don't know where my eternity would be spent. What I'm going to do real quickly is I'm going to count to three and I want you to raise your hand. I know immediately those of you who are ready to respond said there is people looking around and they're going to think bad things about me. They're going to think that I did this or did that. And I want to tell you that's all lies from the pit of hell. Ain't nobody here to gossip about you. Ain't nobody here to judge you. We are here to celebrate you, to come alongside of you, to pray with you and believe that God's purpose for your life is a beautiful journey and a relationship with him and the best is ahead. If that's you and you need to know that you know that you know, don't let this moment pass. I wanna make sure the place that God is preparing for me doesn't remain empty. I need to know that's you, I want you to raise your hand on three. One, two, three. That's me, Pastor Wes. I want to boldly proclaim that Christ is Lord today. I need to know that I know that I know where my eternity will be spent. I need peace in my life. I need joy. I need hope. I need these things that come from a relationship with the Lord. I want to choose Jesus today. Amen. We lived in a life of darkness of the sacrifice of Jesus we find light he paved the way for us to live that life full of joy hope peace and love and then he gave us the mission to go into all the earth and make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father the Son and the Holy Spirit teaching them to obey the things I have commanded you He paid the price, and now he's called us to share it. So my friends, come and help me forward. I want you to light your candle and just tell the Lord how thankful you are for him, for his goodness, for his mercy, what he's done in your life. And then as you pass it on to the next person around you, I want you to think, God, who is the person that I'm called to share this message, this light with, as we remember what he's done and the mission that he's given us this season? Silent night, holy night, all is calm. Oh.
Sorry.